So direct products of groups are our first key tool to understand if I have two small groups that maybe I understand really well, how do I combine their forces into a larger group, of which each of those original pieces can be seen as a subgroup, but which can have much more interesting and rich structure than each of these groups individually had. Now that we've been able to classify what the product of two cyclic groups looks like in this construction, we're now in a position to finally pull the mask off of the multiplicative groups un. In other words, the groups of integers which are relatively prime to n under the operation of multiplication mod n. We're finally equipped to understand what these groups look like, what is their fundamental underlying structure as finite abelian groups. A couple of the results that we'll need in this video are taken from number theory. For example, one of the key things that powers our classification of these multiplicative groups is the multiplicativity of the Euler phi function, the totient function, which counts how many natural numbers less than n are relatively prime to n. And what I mean by multiplicativity is that if I take two natural numbers s and t that are relatively prime and I multiply them together and I want to know how many numbers, natural numbers less than their product are relatively prime to that product. So anything which is co-prime to the product of s and t, it turns out from number theory we can write it as a product of something which is co-prime to s and a product of that with something which is co-prime to t. And for that reason, the number of natural numbers that are relatively prime to st is equal to the product of the number of numbers that are relatively prime to s with the number that are relatively prime to t. So for any s and t that are relatively prime, Euler phi function applied to the product is the product of the Euler phi functions. And what we'll be able to get out of that as a corollary is that the multiplicative group of units mod st when s and t are relatively prime is actually going to be isomorphic to the direct product of us with ut. So what this does is it gives me a really powerful way to take a multiplicative group of units mod something and break it apart into a direct product of some smaller u's, some smaller multiplicative groups where the multiplicative modulus is smaller than it originally was. So for example, let's suppose I want to uncover the, the group structure of u168, so the multiplicative group of units modulo 168. According to this corollary, probably the first good idea would be to take the number 168 and find its prime factorization. Because when I find its prime factorization, it can factor into 2 to the third power times 3 to the first power times 7 to the first power. Each of those prime powers is relatively prime one to another. 3, 7, and 8 are relatively prime. And according to this corollary, therefore, u168 is going to be isomorphic to the direct product of u3, u7, and u8. And already, we've made a ton of progress toward understanding the structure. We can think of u168 as being isomorphic to an ordered triplet, where the first entry in that triplet is a number which is relatively prime to 3, so I guess 1 or 2. Right? The second entry is a natural number relatively prime to 7, uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And in the last entry, we have something which is relatively prime to 8, for which the choices are 1, 3, 5, and 7. So already, what we can say is that the first entry here is taken from a group of order 2, the second entry is taken from a group of order 6, and the third entry is taken from a group of order 4, because we know how to classify these very small modulus multiplicative groups. So then the second question is, how do I understand the powers of odd primes? So 3 to the first power, 7 to the first power. Um, what can I say about the structure of those multiplicative groups as finite abelian groups? So if p to the k is a power of an odd prime. Then, according to number theory, we'll be able to show that the group un is actually cyclic, that there exists a generator, and using number theory we can actually find a formula for that generator, but there exists a generator, and therefore un is going to be isomorphic to a cyclic group whose order is equal to the Euler phi function of pk, the number of relatively prime numbers less than um, uh, p to the k, relatively prime to p to the k. And we have a formula for that from when we studied the Euler totient function. Uh, the Euler totient of p to the k is p to the k minus 1 times p minus 1. So what that tells me, so the, just an application of this fact to my classification down here, is that u3 is a cyclic group and u7 is a cyclic group because 3 and 7 are powers of odd primes. And therefore, 
It's going to be a cyclic group of the order given by 5, 3, and 5, 7. And since 3 and 7 are prime, those orders are 2 and 6, respectively. So therefore, we now know that u3 is isomorphic to z2, and u7 is isomorphic to z6. And so there's nothing new under the sun so far. The only place where we don't know what to do with yet is what about this u8? What about a power of an even prime? In other words, a power of 2. So what's going to happen there? Again, we end up having to hit this with some number theory. And the number theory result is going to tell me that un, in the case where n is a power of 2, where the power is greater than or equal to the third power, is not a cyclic group, but that it can be expressed as a direct product of two cyclic groups, a z mod 2 on the one hand, and a z mod 2 to the k minus 2 on the other hand. So this, in this case, u is not going to be a cyclic group but it's going to be isomorphic to a direct product of two cyclic groups. If I apply that to u8, we find that u8 is going to be um, isomorphic to z mod 2 to the 3 minus 2, so z mod 2, direct product z mod 2. Notice that this theorem doesn't cover the cases k equals 1 and 2, but we can do those separately. u of 2, the multiplicative group of units mod 2, well, there's only one element in that group. It's a trivial group, so think of it as the cyclic group of order 1. Meanwhile, u of 2 squared, u of 4, in other words, well, that's a group that only has two elements in it also, 1 and 3, and therefore it's isomorphic to a cyclic group of order 2. We can check those directly. And then all the powers of 2 that are greater than or equal to the third power will use this theorem. And such an example is u8, which the theorem tells me is congruent to z mod 2 to the 3 minus 2, direct product z mod 2. And simplifying this gives me z2. So after all this work, what we've just found out is that u168, the multiplicative group of units mod 168, it's got a bunch of elements in it that are all numbers that are relatively prime to 168. And the numbers are all interesting in another own right, if we're number theorists. But if we're abstract algebraists, we care about the algebraic structure of this group. What does it look like up to isomorphism? And what we find out from this work is that u168 is isomorphic to the direct product of z2, z6, z2, and z2. It also tells us that uh, the order of u168 is going to be the product of the orders of all these groups. 2 times 6 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 2 is 48. So this also tells me that the order of this group, and therefore also the Euler phi function of 168, is equal to 48. And finally, the last thing that we can say is that the orders of elements inside this group can be no more than 6, because 6 is the least common multiple of the orders of all of these individual factors. And none of my remaining individual factors are relatively prime one to another. And therefore, I can't simplify this direct product any further than it already is simplified. So this gives us now the tool to say that if you hand me a multiplicative group of units, un, I don't need to have a whole new category for the isomorphism classes of those groups. They are all isomorphic as finite abelian groups to some direct product of the additive cyclic groups, Zn. And this is how. All we have to do is first find out how to factor my modulus into relatively prime factors. So we'll use a prime factorization to do that. And then once each of those factors is written as a prime power, all of the powers of odd primes are going to be cyclic, and therefore we're going to get just a single cyclic factor representing them. And all of the powers of 2 are going to just be direct products of two cyclic groups, one of them a factor of z mod 2, and the other one z mod 2 to the k minus 2. The big secret is that where we're ultimately going to find out about the classification of finite abelian groups is that this wasn't a, a phenomenon that's just limited to the uns as being some special kind of finite abelian group. It turns out that every finite abelian group we will be able to decompose into a direct product of the cyclic groups ck using similar tools to what we just used here for the multiplicative group of units. In order to actually prove that, it's what we call the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups. We're going to need some more terminology. We're going to need some more tool work. We need some more ability not just to build up larger groups from their smaller subgroups, but also to do the opposite, to take a larger complicated group and identify within it some smaller building blocks that could be used to deconstruct and reconstruct those groups. That's called the process of finding the factor groups for a group, and that's what we'll look at in our next chapter.